folks, I'm back with uh, Marissa and her husband, Ricky, and they fear that they're doomed for divorce and they really want some help before it's too late. Well, here to share some light on this relationship is certified sex therapist, Dr. Tiffany Henry. Welcome, Dr. Thank Henry. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Good. Uh, how common are Ricky and Marissa's issues? Well, actually, it's very common. Most couples start to see the honeymoon phase dwindle in about two years. So you guys are right on track. You've been married for about two years, yes. right? Yeah, so this is very, very common. Okay, what were both of yours upbringing the whole time? How, how were you brought up? Uh, my family was brought up very close. Uh, I have two sisters. Uh, I was very close with my mother and my father, mm -hmm. um, and they're both still happily married. What about you? My biological father was never around. Mm -hmm. um, my mom remarried when I was six years old. My stepdad is amazing. Mm -hmm. I consider him my father. He's just been there since I was little. I can remember little things that he has done. And he's just amazing to my mom and amazing to us. And I could tell that you really love him and appreciate yes. him just because you're cheering up right now. Yeah. But the important thing is, even if your stepdad or stepmother is amazing, that biological parent is so important and crucial to your relationships. Yes. And so it leaves a child feeling like, you know, what did I do? Why did they leave? Was it me? You start to think that as a child. And if you don't get those issues resolved as kids, you're going to take those things into your adult relationships. And that's part of what's going on here. Sometimes I feel like that. Yeah. I feel yeah. that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> now, can you... And, one, and here's the problem right Go here, ahead. Steve. No, no. She's crying. <laughs> Your hand should be right here. Mine shouldn't. <laughs> and that's something I need to work on. Can you explain how they can improve their communication. Well, the best way for couples to improve communication is to listen. A lot of times, couples get into this emotional double dutch where there's an argument going on and mm -hmm. they're just waiting on their turn to jump in. Man, yeah. They're not listening to what's being <laughs> said. They're just, they just want their turn, like right? You know? I like that analogy, that, that's right? what it is. Yeah, so you've got to really digest what he's saying and you've got to digest what she's saying and actually address those issues before you start trying to make your point. You gotta listen. That's what we do. We want to, yeah. you know, overpower one oh, another no. when we talk. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I've seen this before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah, you are. See, as the guy, mm -hmm. this is the golden rule of marriage. You can be happy mm -hmm. or you can be right. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing is, if she's happy, she's gonna make you happy. Okay. So it doesn't even matter whether you're right or wrong or whatever. If she's happy, Honey, God bless you. You're going to be happy at night. Happy life, happy life. Yeah, <laughs> okay, now, Dr. Tiffany, they have also some intimacy mm -hmm. issues, too. Mm -hmm. How do they address it? Well, intimacy is not just physical closeness, but it's emotional closeness, right? And so in order for you to have one, you got to have the other. If you take care of her emotional needs, even just this, Mm -hmm. will go a long way to get you what you want. But I understand you have needs. A man has needs, correct? Yes. Okay. And one of the ways in which men feel loved is through sex. Then they start to get that emotional connection. And I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but at night, after good love, making your man wants to talk you to death, he has so much things to say, and he's so in love with you and connected. <laughs> You might go into a coma. Yeah. But what's the first thing you say when you wake up? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it makes you feel... I'm sorry. Sex makes you feel... Sex makes you feel so much more emotionally connected. I, I know that's right, right though. That's the yeah. truth. Yeah. And so you're going to get that emotional connection from him afterwards. In order for you guys to feel connected and for the intimacy to improve, you've got to give each other what you want. She wants the emotional connection. You want the sex. you got to... Focus on each other and the other person's needs, and you'll get exactly what you wow. want. Wow. What she's saying is absolutely the truth. If you do for her the little things she got to do, she gonna take care of the big thing you got to do. She will literally See? bend over backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? You a TV star. You a TV star. You gonna get yourself a show. So she's absolutely correct, lad. You have to tend to the little things. And she has to tend to him, too. It's not one-sided. I don't want you to feel like, you know, you're doing everything wrong. He loves you. He absolutely loves you. 
And the issues here are more so yours because you don't believe that. And I think you don't believe that because you're not in love with yourself. It's okay, it's okay. But what you have to do is be committed to yourself, committed to working on that. And the, the other challenge that I also see a lot of times, Steve, is you gotta have a life as a stay-at-home mom. Your life can't be your kids. And I know stay-at-home moms, it is the hardest job out there, oh, yeah. you know? It is the hardest job. But if you ever talk to a stay-at-home mom that doesn't have a life outside of those kids, they don't know how to have a conversation. You gotta be able to talk about the things that you love to do. You gotta have your own feelings of self-worth. You have to feel like you got something going on other than these kids. It's tough, but you guys can make it work. If you're committed to making it work, I know 100% that you can. It just takes a little patience, a little understanding, and a little, you know, at night. You see that? Listen, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna help keep Marissa and Ricky on track here. So we're gonna be hooking them up uh, with a counselor in their area, and hopefully they'll continue this important conversation, you know. Love. Thanks to Dr. Tiffany and all of my guests. We'll be right back, folks. I'll fix that.